If you look at the world's tropical forests, which are important to me because that's where most biodiversity is, most of the damage there is done by what my colleague at Duke University, Norman Myers, calls the shifted cultivator. The person who is moved because of economic or social or political pressure to the edge of the forest and must try and eke out a living there. But he, that shifted cultivator is not the only person that's impacting the forest. We rich Europeans and Americans are also having an impact. Why? Because we want a sh an unbelievable variety of, of, of consumer goods. We want tropical hardwoods for our furniture. We have an insatiable demand for lumber and wood chips and pulp for paper and the rest of it. So, when you see the loss of forest in a tropical country, yes, it's partly poor people. Yes, it's partly rich people too. We both have impacts on what is going on there. I think one of the hardest things for us to grasp is um, what, what we're doing to the planet. What our impacts are um, around the planet and, and how we impact places that are really remote. A lot of people say, how do I know that we're having an impact on the planet? Well, I want to introduce you to my favorite cookbook. It's called The Joy of Cooking. And this is the third major edition. This is the third generation that's produced this book. And I want you to look at the recipes for fish because nothing tells us more about our human impacts than the way that fish have moved through this multi-generational cookbook. In the first edition, cod and haddock and herring were all the rage. By the second edition, there were fish like orange ruffy and um, Chilean sea bass. And now you can find recipes for tilapia and catfish. The impact that we have on the most remote oceans of the world are summarized by, by my favorite cookbook. Um, we have eliminated some of the major fisheries of the world. Thomas Huxley talking to a distinguished audience of politicians and ambassadors and royalty and scientists 120 years ago said that the world's fisheries are inexhaustible in his opinion. Completely wrong. We have eliminated fisheries from the Antarctic waters north to, to the Bering Sea and in every major ocean. You can see that progression of how fish have been popular and are now rare by looking at cookbooks like The Joy of Cooking. You know, interestingly, it's not new that in the Middle Ages, um, sturgeon was once a fish for the riffraff, for the poor. Then it became the fish for, for people of substance, then just for the king, and then half a century later, nobody actually had seen a sturgeon. It became some sort of mythical fish. We are quite capable of working our way through one fish stock after another. That evidence of what we're doing to the world's oceans, remote places, is as close as your nearest supermarket. And you can look at the kinds of fish that were there. And you can go to your cookbook and find fish that's hard to find on your fishmonger slab. You can talk to your mum, you can talk to your grandmother and ask what were they cooking. It's completely different. And if we're doing that with fisheries at the far end of the world, you can only imagine what we're doing to things that are closer to home. What we're doing to the world's tropical forests in terms of chopping down the timber there. So yes, in our comfortable, uh, rich homes in, in America and Europe, 
yes, we're having a massive impact on the world's environment. 